Hey everybody, it's Fran, again in the lab. Fran tone time. What? Yeah, I know. I get my fair share of people saying, when are you going to talk about Fran tone pedals and stuff? Well, okay. I'm going to do a video about the Brooklyn Overdrive. It's my uh, 2003, I guess, original release was sometime around 2003. I came up with the Brooklyn. Uh, it's an LM386 type overdrive, um, similar to the Peach Fuzz. What, what I did with the Brooklyn is I wanted to create a pedal with my signature trademark LM386 tone, distortion tone, uh, but to be able to double up the harmonics to get an even more rich, thicker sound. And it's an interesting enough concept that I thought I'd do a little video on it. This particular Brooklyn is a prototype from around that time, uh, and I've added a switch, not exactly a standard, because <laughs> uh, the regular Brooklyns didn't have the switch, but this was just an experimental version that allowed me to switch between having a one set of uh, overdrives or two and really be able to A, B the difference in the sound between the two of them. So what am I talking about anyway? What is this overdrive stuff? Well, okay, um, there are lots of different kinds of ways that you can make sounds that are distorted, fuzz tone, um, overdrive. These are words that you hear. My effects that uh, create distortion, I've done a series of them based on the LM386, which is a single op amp, runs off a single side supply, and it is my signature tone as far as like overdrives and fuzz tones go. Uh, I created the first prototype LM386 distortion box back in 1994, and uh, it was based on that prototype that I made that I took it to uh, my friend who wanted to start a business and we started Frantone back in uh, 94 uh, to make a, like a refined version of that pedal and it, it took like uh, 18 months for us to actually come out with a production ready product. I've done a video about this whole thing. My lecture that I gave um, years ago at uh, Brown University and another lecture I did at the University of the Arts here in Philadelphia. Between those two, it's like a, a good uh, two hours of talking about how that happened, but I won't get into that in here. You can uh, go and look at those videos if you want the details of how I uh, started Frantome. But it was that LM386 overdrive distortion that really got me making the Hepcat pedal and then the Peach Fuzz, which was sort of the same idea but pushed a little further. And uh, the Brooklyn is the third in that line where I had uh, the Hepcap being a simple two-stage overdrive amplifier to create uh, an overdrive distortion. The Peach Fuzz was a three-stage that uh, incorporated a lot of saturation and using the LM386 compression, which gave the Peach Fuzz sound, which people say is legendary. I'll take their word for it. And the Brooklyn was the third pedal in that series which took the Peach Fuzz sound and created a new kind of turn on that by doubling up the harmonics to create an even richer, more complex sound. So this particular uh, unit has this selector switch, so if I have it in the up position then it's only using one set of overdrives, just like a Peach Fuzz, and in the down position it's using two running those two sets of op-amp overdrives in parallel and then recombining them on their output allows to mix those two signals and creates an additive harmonic tone. Let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Let's play the Brooklyn Overdrive.
All right, so that's the single. We've got just one op amp overdriving the main LM386. Let's see, this is one. If I go to two. It's just a little more complicated. I've got some wine. You hear that? That's a uh, that's the basement picking up some switching noise. All right, there. That's I can't get around that. That's that cell tower. <laughs> I think I talked about that in the other video. That all my radios. That's what you hear. It's just the digital noise coming from that cell tower. It's right outside the window. this one a quick little video give you a little idea of what's possible with overdrives um, the postscript on this one would be that uh, yes it's true that I am on hiatus with Frantone because I, I'm putting all my time energy and, and, and expenses into Fran lab <laughs> and there's really only room in my life for one major thing um, but uh, the reason that I kind of switched from Frantone full-time to FranLab full-time was that, well, a couple years ago, I ran into snags with my production because, again, if you watch those other videos uh, from those lectures that talk about my very specific philosophy in pedal making and my long history of making pedals, uh, that there are certain standards that must be met for me to consider a product to be a Frantone. And so finish is one thing, and the circuit boards are another. These are two critical things that I was not going to be doing myself anymore. And for the last time that I brought Frantone back in 2016, I farmed out those two things to two very specific companies that were local. It was very important to me that I um, have these things done by companies that are close by. I like to keep the money local, and I like to stay hands-on. So I want to be able to go... <laughs> solve problems, uh, work with the people who are doing the things. I don't want to have to have something shipped to me with who knows what quality and have to fly somewhere to deal with problems. I wanted it to be local. So the company that was doing my coding and silk screening, they were in New Jersey. And uh, within like six months, uh, in like 2017, the company that was doing my coding and screening, they were doing an excellent job. We, we had spent like a year perfecting the processes, getting the layering just right, we had the paint right, we had the baking right, we had the screening right, everything was perfect. And that company got acquired by uh, a foreign multinational and uh, it was uh, re reconfigured and uh, as a result of that, um, they said, look, you know, you, you're, you're going to have to pay four times what you've been paying for the same work, you know, if you want to continue to use this. And it just, it became uh, completely impossible to use that again. And I, and I didn't bother to get a replacement because, like I said, my coding process is very specific. And one of the things that's trademark about Frantone products, like the Frantone pedals, is that the finish on a Frantone is second to none. It's not like the commercial grade painting that you get on 
other effects or any like any product that's painted that might have like this the finish that you might have on a an enclosure uh, on a computer server that's in a server farm somewhere you know it's a very specific kind of painting uh, people who see my products close up are like you know how do you, can you possibly get the finish that good well it's because painstaking attention to detail and a very specific process and the silk screening too hand silk screening all the way uh, and I just couldn't get the quality and uh, before people get on Google and say oh Fran there are these companies that do effects pedals and stuff uh, problem solved there I just solved your problem why aren't you making pedals no it doesn't work like that it's not the same it's like there's this and then there's this <laughs> you know it's just not the same and the circuit board manufacturer that I had in Philly been using them for years and it was a similar thing where they had uh, turmoil said look you know we're gonna have to charge you twice as much for the same work can't do it anymore and I was already paying five times as much as China and people would say well Fran why didn't you go to China like yeah well because it's there's a design philosophy I want it to be done by hand I want it to be done local it's a so I couldn't make a Frantone the way a Frantone had to be made and so it's on hiatus and I've dealt with the um, you know trying to license the idea for companies but it's just there's always a problem something is always wrong and I spend years with uh, other companies uh, who uh, expressed desire to make Frantones and after really got into it and they really saw what they were up against turned out that they really couldn't make Frantones after all and here we are in 2019 <laughs> I think that the interesting thing was too um, uh, even though I started making LM386 overdrives in 1994 and even though I invented the idea <laughs> of the LM386 overdrive. <laughs> uh, after 25 years, uh, I was starting to get comments uh, with the reissues of another th LM386 overdrive. Jesus, why can't you just get your own thing going? Why can't you do something original instead of copying other people? And that's when you know that you've been doing it for too long. <laughs> when people who weren't even born when you started doing it accuse you of ripping off the people who ripped you off for copying your original idea. So, another reason that I no longer like to make effects pedals for a living. <laughs> all right, that's it. I'm Fran, thanks for watching. Thanks too to all the patrons out on Patreon who are making Fran Lab possible. Hey, you know, if it weren't for the patrons on Patreon, I would just be uh, working at Walmart. But the only reason that I'm able to do FranLab full time is because of the patrons who sponsor this channel on Patreon. It's the only reason I'm able to do it. So, thank you. If you like what I do, if you want to become a patron, just follow the link in the description. Become a patron. All right. I'm Fran. I'll see you around real soon. Bye.
appreciate the video and it